Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> look at here. Look at here. Look at here. We are yet coming again tonight <laughs> for another session of Set Apart. God is yet, he's he's been he's just been so good and so kind to us that, that he has blessed us yet with another opportunity just to just to come and say thank you yes just to just to be grateful just because of him just loving us and, and watching over us and, and blessing us and we and you know what we just grateful it, it ain't it ain't too much else to that we just grateful um Absolutely. we 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 <laughs> It's, this is going to be real good tonight because we got two brines, we got two B's and two V's. <laughs> so we're going to have to, <laughs> we have to make sure this thing is, is good tonight. So we make sure that everybody know who everybody talking to. But I am so grateful that uh, Brother Brian and Brother Vivian Matthews of Hope Temple of Praise, where my brother, Pastor Saladin Johnson, is the senior pastor there, they have uh, decided and 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 uh, to be with us tonight, and you know what? I'm excited. I really am excited <laughs> that they are yeah. a part of this uh, session tonight. Um, and of course, my my good my good boo, ride or die, my my side piece, my all together one and one, Brian yeah. Brian Coley, <laughs> who is is going to be with us mm -hmm. tonight, just to come on and, and bring this thing on in and, and, and just, we just want to be a blessing to you all tonight. Amen. Amen. So like, you Amen. know, as the kids say, like, and share, like, and share, just bring it on in and, and we going to get, get to getting, um, I'm going I'm to let Brian and, and Vivian introduce themselves, even though I've introduced them, but I'm going to let you let them introduce themselves. I'm going to introduce themselves. Amen. Amen. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Brian Matthews, uh, and uh, that's about it, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you'll you'll find out the rest in the uh, dialogue on yeah. tonight. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and and my wife is with me, uh, yeah. Vivian. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm <laughs> that would be me. That's um, you, hi, baby. everybody. My name is Vivian Matthews, and this is Marriage Chronicles. I thank God for uh, this ministry I have been following and watching. And uh -huh. lo and behold, I got a call. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I said, well, wait a minute now. <laughs> <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. You know, God has called yeah. us out to be bold. Yeah. We can't be. Yeah. Worker bees and be scared or be fearful to that's right, that's right, bring things to light and tell the truth. That's um, right, tell our own truth because right. we're the, the best people to get our own stories from. Amen. Don't let nobody else tell the lies on you. You can you can do your own stories. Right. So I just thank God for your ministry. I thank God for you that's both. It. Um I I was sharing with you the other day that. You know, I saw those Chuck Taylors coming down that aisle. <laughs> and I looked, I said, babe, I like this woman. I didn't even yeah. know you. And then when I found out it was another V and B, I said, uh oh, there we go. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. We it it was amazing how um the Lord just put us together because again, our our mutual um connection is, is Pastor Saladin. Yes. Um, Pastor Saladin is, is my brother, um, not only in Christ, but he's just my brother. Um, mm -hmm. Pastor Saladin has, 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 has been a blessing to my family in more ways than one. My children, they, it's, 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 it's Uncle Saladin, it's Uncle, Uncle Pastor Saladin, however you want to call it. And they love him. And, and we just have grown um, very close um, with, you know, with him and his family, Lady Rashida. And the Hope Temple of Praise, and and mm -hmm. we're just grateful for the connection. We're just really grateful Absolutely. for the connection. Um, mm -hmm. And that's how that's how me and my Brian met Vivian and her Brian, and it was just 
it, that's just our mutual connection. And, and you just never know how God is going to do what he's going to do. Yeah. But I'm just grateful for the connection. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to ask, um, um, uh, Brian, Mr. Matthews, I'm going to say Mr. Matthews for the sake of the yeah. Brian thing. <laughs> Mr. Matthews to um, tell us how, how you and, and, and Vivian, how y'all um, end up hooking up and getting married. What, what brought that about? Hooking up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. That's what we did at first. You know what I mean? It had to be a hookup before a hitch up. You understand me? <laughs> 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 Great, I ain't yes, um, yes, yes. So what had happened? So, so, <laughs> so um, I want to. Uh, so we went to school together. We we graduated high school together. Um, so uh, you know, I I took a liking into her early on, though. You know what I mean? Like like ninth, tenth grade. You know what I'm saying? And I asked her, could we go together? Back when that language. But that one, that's how he said things back then. You know, can we go together? So, uh, she, so she shot me down, and um, and, uh, and it, you know, and, you know that, uh, and it was cool because later I found out, you know, we, you know, we all had, you know, growing pain, growing issues. She was going through something at the time, and for real, I really wasn't ready to be a man to some woman anyway. You know, what I mean? so. It was all good. So, so fast forward twenty years later, I was attending a CTI downtown, and uh, son was like, "Man, go ahead, leave and go." Uh, I was going to uh, twelve step meetings at the time, so someone was telling me to go, you know, leave early, go to me. So I come down the escalator, and there she go down at uh, I think it was McPherson Square somewhere downtown. And uh, so I seen her and I was I was, I was like, Vid? Because I hadn't seen her in 20 years, like 20 years, they, for real. Like, you know how when you be out of school, you bump into different classmates and what have you, you know, along the way, along the time. And, uh, you know, I always, you know, because we was in, when we was in school, you know, we was climbing, we had a little crew going on, we was all right, you know what I mean? It was cool. <laughs> and, you know, you just thought about, uh, you know, you think about your old classmates from time to time. It's like, man, I wonder what ever happened to her. So fast forward back back to the story, like, you know, we uh I seen her, you know what I mean? And uh we was talking. She had two stops to go. I think I spilled my guts to her because I hadn't seen her. And I was I just spilled my guts about everything that was going on with me and I was just telling her everything and I was uh and uh, you know, she got off the, the train. And uh, she left an impression on, me, you know what I'm saying. But I seen that she was, uh, she, uh, she had um, a tie, uh, so to speak. She was, uh, she had a wet ring on. So I, you know, I ain't really pushed forward with it, but you know, that don't stop an attraction. But um, so a year after that. Uh, she she sent me a friend request on Facebook, so then we started conversing, you know, uh, via messenger, and um, you know, and it went from there. You know what I mean? I, I shot a couple of shots. She shot some shots, and, and we went from there. You know, and uh, fast forward, now that's my, my wife. You know, so that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Vivian, your turn. <laughs> His story, her story. Okay, so yes, those things did take place. Um, however, in school, when he did ask, I was going through a lot at home. Um, you know, the 80s and 90s was a big era in the D.C. area for drugs and um, addictions. A lot of big time hustlers, a lot of different things going on for those that are not familiar with the area, but it was heavy. Um, my mom fell prey to those things and 
our home environment at this matter of fact at the time we were staying in transitional housing um right up the street from Suitland High School and a lot of people didn't even know this and before I even went to Suitland Brian probably didn't eat well he didn't know we were both in junior high together as well I went there uh babe did you go in the eighth grade seventh and eighth nah just the eighth yeah so that was the same for me I was there in the eighth grade we both went to key but I never saw him we had different homes um when I was doing that I was in hiding from people so that nobody would know that we were staying in a shelter. So there's a Wonder Bread place over there off near Sheriff Road, um, Dingwood at Fairmont Heights. It was, I don't know if it's still there, but it was a Wonder Bread place. And the shelter was called Shepherd's Cove. It was for women and children. And I would take my middle sister and I, and we would walk down in front of the Wonder Bread place and catch the bus because I didn't want anybody to see us coming from the shelter. Later on, I found out it was another young lady on the same bus in the same situation. Her mom was our roommate. Not going to name no names, but that was kind of a relief that God was letting me know, you're not in this by yourself. Everybody goes through things. But being that young, I had to keep this image. My grandmother always said, you never look like your situation. You're always supposed to come out the house dressed. So fast forward, um, we get to Suitland. Brian did ask that question, but I totally forgot about him even asking me that. And that's where the rejection came in for me because I told him, you know, at the time it wasn't a good time. I didn't want him knowing what was going on in our house. At the time, you know, I was taking care of my siblings and my mom was doing her thing, but she made sure we ate good though, I tell you that. Um, moving forward, I was into a lot of things at a young age. Um, I left home early, pillar to post, and it opened up the gate for a lot of different things. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But the entire time, even when I was a young child, um, five or six years old, we were living in St. Louis, Missouri. And my mom, we, we talked about this a little while ago too. I remember hearing the music in the church and I started snapping my fingers like I was at a party. The music was that good to me. I did not want to leave that church. So <clears throat> even being a child, it was in there already. It was already instilled in me. The Holy Spirit was already dealing with me. Mm -hmm. So moving forward, anytime I tried to get into something, I was always the one that got caught. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get away with nothing. Coming from Suitland, I remember one time um, the same, the transitional housing across the street from Suitland, and I was skipping school. So anybody that knows, if you're from D.C. or Southside and you PG County in between, you know about the P-12. Uh -huh. So the P-12 took you all the way down, all the way back. So my best friend at the time, Crystal, we hopped on the P-12, call ourselves Hook and School. We was all over the place. We came back. We timed it perfect and everything. Say, okay, we coming back at the right time. Well, lo and behold, Ms. Rowe was waiting for me at the door. <laughs> Where you been? Oh, well, I went to school. She said, how was it? I said, it was good. My friend Sabrina, i never forget that. She had snitched on me and said, she wasn't at school today. I said, are you serious? My mother got to be some kind of bad. Wow. But just remembering those times, you know, mm -hmm. not being able to get away with certain things. Mm -hmm. And then you fast forward to now. We left off at Suitland. Yes, I saw him on the train. I did have my ring on, but I was going through a divorce at the time. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be bothered with anybody. So I kept the ring on. 
Mm -hmm. Um, The divorce was due to domestic violence um, and some other things that were going on at the time. You know, I don't really want to dwell on that part because I'm pushing forward. You know, my prayer was always that my ex-husband would get the help that he needed to get. We Mm -hmm. moved forward. Um, the <clears throat> best thing that came out of that was our son. Okay. And you move forward. I meet. I saw. I saw Brian. He didn't see me. I actually saw him two times. And I was like, Lord, what is going on? It's like he said, it's twenty years. Mm-hmm. And now here it is. I keep seeing him. The one time I kept calling his name, I was going up Good Hope Road. And he didn't see me. He was, um, I don't, I guess it was one of his meetings that he was attending at the time. Mm -hmm. And I saw him right there by the big chair. So I was blowing my horn and waving. He couldn't hear me. So I kept going. My son looked over. He talked, who is that? (laughs) (laughs) I said, oh, it's somebody from school. But when I tell you those two stops, Brian talked my head off. I couldn't get a word. I couldn't really get a word in at all. So all of that stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. And like he said, it left the impression. And at the same time, it made me wonder how he was doing because the things that he was telling me, I was like, dang, I hope he's okay. Mm -hmm. And at this time, I had started dating. Um, I was Mm kind of scared because my son, he was like, well, um, you stay in the house. All you do is go to work, come home. That's all I wanted to do. I had been through so much that I just wanted peace. Mm-hmm. And that's what I prayed for. I, I would go to sleep asking God, God, please let me go to sleep peacefully. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to stay awake all night long because that's I couldn't sleep for a long time. I had right. Right. And once I met Brian, um, finally, when we started talking we started dialoguing and he asked me what was my favorite book in the bible I said Uh said, right there no he didn't just ask me that (laughs) I said wait a minute now but Uh hold on no because before that I had questioned him because he he said um something about what did you say he said something about his faith and I said I asked him wait were you talking about um the Trinity, God the Father, he, he came back and said, Are you, is this a trick question? And I started laughing. He said, you mean the Father, hey, the Son, and the Holy Spirit? Spirit? No. I said, well, I got to be sure because you That's never me. know these days. Yeah. Because you could be something else. And I need to be sure this time. I didn't want to be involved with somebody that wasn't a believer because right. being unequally yoked, and that that kind of like leads me up to my next my next question because you said you said a lot and yeah and I remember just um just having you know dialogue with you and, and Brian prior to this session and this being um uh Brian's first marriage and your second marriage and 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 for us with my with myself and my Brian it was it was first and second marriage with us. The only difference is that we was married to each other the first and the second time. <laughs> because we got mm. married and got divorced and then got remarried. Right. So so with 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 that, um um how how did you how did you adjust Mr. Matthews? How did you adjust to Vivian and her situation and and what what did you realize um or what did you change about yourself if anything to to let her know that that you was down because you you and what I mean by down was is that you wasn't that you wasn't that guy that she just she just walked away from because even with my Brian I had to there was a lot of adjusting because see, mm-hmm. I had I had taken on this this sense of independence. I have take I had taken on this sense of you can't cross this line because if you cross this line, I'm you subject to anything. And it was it was I had yeah. to I had to adjust. But but with him, he he brought something that I had never experienced, and that was one was patience, 
Second one was, I ain't the guy that just, I ain't that guy that just mm -hmm. that you that you was dealing with because I dealt with domestic violence too. Mm -hmm. So I'm, you know, how how did you? I mean, how you deal with that? Um, fruits of the spirit. Okay. In a nutshell, you know what I'm saying. Um, because at the time. When well, well, first a lot of uh, if it, it, you know, I put my my feelings in the forefront because I'm somewhat of a hopeless romantic. So I'm like, you no. Know, once we got started, yeah, I was hearing what she was saying, but I really wasn't hearing what was what was done. Mm -hmm. You understand if that makes sense? Oh, it so, does. So in my mind, I'm infatuated on a pink cloud. Meanwhile, we having these conversations, we talking about what happened to each other. But then again, I'm like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I'm I'm just looking at the outside. Mm -hmm. Not to negate her inside. Now I'm looking at, let me say this, I was looking at her outside and the good things from the inside. However, I ignored the pain because the pain did what didn't it ain't even really come out yet. Mm -hmm. Until really, I said I. Until we said I do. Mm -hmm. That's good. So that was good. So 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 when when we uh so when this journey started, this merge covenant started. You know, those things start to come out, and it's been days I look back and be like, Dang. and you know what? I can't say that I didn't know, because mm -hmm. we talked about all this stuff in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? So to answer your question, and then I'm reading the book. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I, I try to stay in the Bible. You know what I mean? And, um, right. Read the scriptures, study the scriptures, and um, like I say, I had, you know, it's it's in me to be patient. It's in me to be kind. It's in me to be loving to the best of my ability. Because there, are, you know, some days is better than others. Some days I spazzed out and got the cussing and fuss. Right. From my lack of understanding or my lack of ability to handle her the way I should be handling her when she's expressing or when that pain was tricked. Mm -hmm. you know I'm saying so, uh, like I say, I just had it, you know, we, we had a fight, you know, we got over it, kept it moving, you know what I mean? And, 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 and basically, just just that, man. Just 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 the fruit of spirits, man. I just had to, you know, try to, because mm -hmm. my love is nowhere near perfect. Mm -hmm. I have to continue to try to uh, nurture her, where uh, I know how to, and the rest of it is on the job training. Mm -hmm. Cause this being my first marriage, I don't really know. Cause any other relationship I've been in, it wasn't, you know, I, I really didn't take it this serious, so to speak. Right, right. Even though if I thought I did, I look at it now, it's like, nah, I wasn't, that wasn't, that wasn't real. You know what I'm saying? Right. Another relationship, you know, so. Um, but yeah, like I say, it was just you know, basically that. Just, you know. And then conversing with, uh, Older Murray gentleman, uh -huh. you know what I mean. God had placed some older, old, you know, people been married like 20, 30 years. You know, what I mean, I had, you know, I had to ask them some questions. You know, how do you get through this? How do you do this when she do that? How do you, you know, what I mean, all of that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And and they helped me. You know what I'm saying to where uh, we still together today. You know what I'm saying. Uh -huh. You know, so. Uh, yeah, that that's that's pretty much uh, that. Brian Cole, you want to interject right there, honey? You put you on self on mute. <laughs> yeah, I I, I didn't want to go off, so um, okay. I was listening to what he was saying, and I remember the uh, counsel that I had. Um, the gentleman that come to mind when you're talking about the the older. Um, influences that he had as far as the marriage is concerned uh, and the first thing I think of is um, Elder Rosser um, the father Elder Rosser 
and, and Deacon Barry, uh, which I talked to, uh, um, I almost called him Elder, but uh, Deacon Thompson. Mm-hmm. And these, these just a, just a couple of, uh, from off the top, and these uh, three that I confide in, um, they, even though they they may not look like it, but they were much older than I am, mm-hmm. and I confided in them because I saw in them uh, the way I would have liked to have been married. You know, mm-hmm. that this is uh, these these guys are seasoned. They've they've seen uh, storms come and go, and, and they they right. they're still uh, friendly. You know, they still sit on the same side of the church together, you know. And I looked for um, as much wisdom from them as I could get, and right. you know, the guys that the, the people that you were talking to, uh, B Money, I, I that uh, I sat there and I didn't do much talking unless they asked me some. I would engage them, and then I would sit back, and I'd shut up mm-hmm. because they they had been places that I had not. So I want to know, okay, tell me what you have, so I can use it to uh, to uh, to to enlighten myself, and to maybe I can work my marriage that way. Um, I found out that you can't copy you can use what they tell you as a guide but you can't copy you always have to adjust it to your wife Mm -hmm. because just because they wear the 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 same shoe it doesn't fit the same Mm -hmm. so you you have to adjust what they said to work with your wife and that that takes a little uh work on your part Mm so um it, it keeps you uh, going to the, the gym of working on your marriage. Mm-hmm. Planet Fitness might be closed, but the gym of working on your marriage is always open. It's 24-7. You yes, sir. Man. That's right. <laughs> That's true. So, so Mr. Matthews, with, with, with that being said, how, how, did it, how, how did you adjust with with uh, not only learning how to deal with Vivian coming out of um, abusive rape relationship, survivor of domestic violence, and how did you deal with her being a, a parent? And then you saying, okay, I'm, I'm going to marry your mama and I'm going to be your, your stepfather or your father, however you want to look at it. How you do that? Um. I had to adjust where um, it, it 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 wasn't about me because I can be selfish. Mm-hmm. So with that, you know, I would I would uh, I would like practice not being selfish and being selfless. You know what I mean? In a nutshell, because the times where and, and then I had to learn that it's a lot of things I can't say to him in front of her mm-hmm. that's a lot of things or a few things you know i had i had to i had to approach delicately you know what i'm saying um and i had to be really practice i gotta continue to practice a lot of humility even if when they don't look like it you know what i'm saying like i gotta mm-hmm. practice a lot of humbleness because mm-hmm. like i say um uh Vivian, she's a, a a strong woman, and um, if if she sees something that she don't understand, or see something that she think is wrong, she won't approach the situation immediately. So that's why I have to approach things delicately and let her know that you know I mean well what I'm saying or what I'm doing or whatever the case, because um. And, and it, the, the, where I had to adjust was, you know, uh, I had, basically I had, I had I could, like I said, I couldn't, I couldn't say. I, I have to think before I approach situations. 
mm-hmm. that happen in the house. You know what I'm saying with with, mm-hmm. with each other. It's like, it's like for example, my stepson Richard. You know he's a young man. It's things that I feel like he should learn a certain way, and it's things that she feel like he should learn a certain way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So with that, it's like okay. I'm learning how to, when to step up and be like, no, we're going to do it this way because this is right. Mm-hmm. Or just fall back and be like, okay, well, we're going to see how this works out. Mm-hmm. And that's where the humility come in at because I, when I have to fall back, when 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 what I think should happen is not uh, ex- exercised. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so I have to... Uh, like I say, I, I man, I have to adjust on a daily basis. You know, on a momentary basis. Like the adjusting oh, yeah. is and to be honest with you, I don't I don't necessarily know what I'm supposed to adjust to. Only thing I know is that I'm supposed to come into this with a mind of Christ. Oh, yeah. And I just try to practice that. Oh, yeah. The rest of it works itself out the way God works it out. Mm-hmm. And then I just learn from the result. So if I see that again, I know how to how to how to move through that or move mm-hmm. you know move through that situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I may make some mis- and I make and I do make mistakes. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Whereas though I go into it with the mind of me, right, right, and and it'll blow up and it'll do what it do. You know what I'm saying? So. I just try to continue. That's why I try to read this book, man. Because <laughs> this drink, man, it, it helps me. Not, and not even that. The will of God helps me to, you know, it just helps me to navigate through all this. You know what I'm saying? And understanding, I have to constantly be reminded it's not about me. And I'm not, I don't know it all. And, you know, just ask the Holy Spirit to help me to, uh, to stand up as the man of the house when I'm supposed to. And just be, you know, just, just, just it's my look. <laughs> it's a lot, I know. It's a lot, yeah. Now, 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 with with Brian saying that, Vivian, I'm coming to you, babe. Um, what kind of adjustments did you have to make? Because here you here you got you got a brother. You already know he liked to talk. Because you told him, you said that he talks your head off on the subway. So you know he liked to talk. <laughs> so you got a brother that that's that's that he interacts with you and he may interact with you in a way that you're not used to because you had already made in, up in your mind that even though you were going through a divorce, the ring was a was a was a a a, a, a repellent. Go ahead about your business because I ain't ready for that. Now here it is, this man that came to you and he said what he said. And for whatever reason, y'all knew each other. You already made that clear that y'all knew each other from the past. But here it is, he come back in your life and he's saying what he's saying. But you, you're going through what you're going through. And some men you said, give them a chance. Mm-hmm. Some men you said, give them a chance. Now what, now what that was, only you know that. Mm-hmm. But you gave him a chance, and here it is. He 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 there, and he ain't what you used to. Something you had to change in order to adjust to him. What was it? Everything. <laughs> my attitude, my independence. Because, like you said, I had gained a sense of independence. Like you could tell me to do anything at this point. Um, I had got into self. It was pride because I said, I'm not letting no man tell me this and he ain't going to do this. When I get in this relationship, if I ever date again, this, that, and the third, you're not going to tell me this X, Y, Z. And God had just quickly humble me mm-hmm. because once we started to date, not only, okay, so not only we talked about the kids, so not only was it my son is his son as well Mm -hmm. and brian also has his son's older brother okay which is not his biological son okay so blended family blended family okay 
<laughs> and that took some adjustments mm-hmm. because we both were at a place where we didn't want to introduce the kids at all yet. It took us a while to do that because that's dangerous territory. Mm-hmm. And I know for me, I've never had another man around my son. Mm-hmm. Even when I was when I was dating, I never did that. Mm-hmm. And I and I didn't know how to go about that because this is a young man, 12 years old, turning 13. And I'm getting ready to introduce him to somebody that for his whole life, he know his father is the man of the house. Mm-hmm. He sets the stage. This will be due. So mm-hmm. now it goes from that to me being a single parent. And it's he and I, and now I'm setting the stage for the rules and then boom, transition. Here we go with this. Mm-hmm. So how is this going to work? So mm-hmm. a lot of things I probably was on edge about um, saying, okay, it's certain things like the parenting was way different to me. It's things mm-hmm. like he said, I felt this should have been done. That wasn't being done. And vice versa, we still go through this today. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a blended family. It's part of what happens. You're not going to always agree on everything. And you have to take into account as much as people always say a child's supposed to say in the child's place. Let's keep it real. When it comes to blended families, that's out the window because you have mm-hmm. to take the child's feelings into consideration. Mm-hmm. How can you mm-hmm. not? Mm-hmm. Just like with Brian, I had to commend him because I didn't know he went to my son about us getting married because mm-hmm. they kept it from me. Mm-hmm. Now, I looked and I said, Dad, he didn't even have to do that, but he did. Mm-hmm. And for my son to be okay with it, for my son to embrace him, my son, you know, thinks highly of Brian and I love his son. And, Mm -hmm. you know, even with the older one, it's a love there. Mm -hmm. I have to love what Brian, who he loves, I have to accept. It's Mm -hmm. a package. Mm -hmm. If you can't accept the package, it's a no deal. Mm -hmm. That's that's number one. Mm -hmm. Because people always say, oh, my kids come first. No, no, no. When you get married, your husband and your wife come first. Mm -hmm. People get that mixed up. But when you bring the blended family, how you deal with that? Mm -hmm. It goes real life. This is, and we in the body of Christ. So, Mm -hmm. Uh oh. We out there and we just (laughs) in any kind of way, but we in the church, blended Mm -hmm. family. So, where do you go from here? Like, okay, mm-hmm. how are we going to maneuver these things? We we got problems like everybody else. And that's mm-hmm. the stigma that I want to get away from because I don't know if people think as believers we got green blood, but it's red, people. It's red. If you cut me and you cut everybody else on here, we all bleed red. That's Just so right. y'all know. I don't know what happened, but that's for right. some reason they expect us to be perfect and mm-hmm. we are not perfect. Mm-hmm. We are imperfect humans trying to strive to be perfect every yes, day ma'am. Walk towards Christ every day. Yes, That's ma'am. The between us, we repent mm-hmm. and we ask God for forgiveness because we're supposed to forgive quickly. Mm-hmm. But in the world, they don't get into that part of it. Mm-hmm. They think we being holier than now and we no. doing this and we doing that. No, we got no. real problems, Slim. That's yeah. what I'm saying. We got real problems. That's we right. Human. That's right. That's we in right. here arguing, fighting. It's been times we on our way to church. We in there arguing. On the way to church. On the way to church. Okay. Get Uh-oh. to the church. And our pastor says, I need you to come up here and pray. Right. Said, Jesus, mm-hmm. why did you just do that? Yeah. Now he wasn't in the car with us, but that was the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Now what I'm gonna say, now I'm not praying because I'm beefing with him. No, I gotta put my side. <sighs> Y'all don't know what we deal with. And there is no facade, there is no front. And as believers, we need to stop putting on that front, putting on that mask. Mm-hmm. Take your mask off, man. Show the people you real. 
Mm-hmm. That's why nobody don't want to follow in the body because they just see this pers- this big persona, this big thing. You telling people mm-hmm. like I was talking to you, Elder V. You mm-hmm. gotta wear your 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 skirts down to your mm-hmm. ankle. You better not put on no no bracelet on your on your ankle because you a mm-hmm. prostitute if you do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, your hair can't be long. Come on, man. When we go to when we go what to have God, God is not about that. That's right. What's on the inside? Mm-hmm. Whatever you got on on the outside. If so, you telling me that if this man who just finished doing crack today say, "Hey, I want my soul saved. I want Christ in my life," and you sitting up there giving him the words of wisdom and talking to him and pouring into him, and he sober up and he becomes a sober minded man, you telling me that he's not gonna go to heaven? No, sir. It don't work like that. We gotta okay. be real as Christians. We gotta so, be real. Sorry. So okay. No, 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 no. That's good because every time I'll be trying to I, you know, I'm trying to keep up with my with my list. Okay. <laughs> so that go right back into what, what B said when we talked. Talk about the conversion, B. Because you she, she y'all bringing it right together. It's all about the conversion. Y'all just if we start with one topic and y'all just bring it right on in. I don't even have to introduce nothing. Y'all <laughs> what, talk about the conversion, V. Talk about the conversion. <laughs> the, conver- the conversion, like, um, the co- okay. Take converting time, over to converting, converting to. Or oh, how really for real converting to to follow along with this with the with the way of Christ. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Because the merge relationship could possibly, if you're not connected and if you're not strong enough, make you throw in that time. Watch yourself. And and this, I always said, you know what? In the beginning, before we got married, I used to say this. Because I remember I used to give a pass and we used to look at some scriptures and talk. And um, I used to say, you know what? Because around the time when me and me and Viv started talking, that that I was I was coming out of a lot of sin, a lot of uh, sexual sin and lust and all that kind of foolishness. So I was mm-hmm. trying to make it a point to change my life around. Mm-hmm. And then one of the ways I wanted to do that was by merge, because it all came at the same time. Like before she even came into the picture, I was already in my spirit like that stuff need to stop. I need to move on and do what God had for me to do. So when Viv came around, it was like, OK. Uh, because my ideal was Merge is to demonstrate the relationship that Christ has with the church. Oh, for real? That's what it's supposed to represent? Yes, sir. Oh, that's how you going? Okay. Your pastor on <laughs> so, here. I just want so, you to know that. That's how you, Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. So, <laughs> so, in that, that's how I'm supposed to treat my wife. <laughs> right? So, with that ideal, I had to go through that 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 converting to. Even though I said it, I didn't even understand what I was saying at the time. Because saying that and living it is two different things. Because to be able to live that, man, I'm trying to tell you, God, God, God has a way of cultivating mm-hmm. us through the merge covenant or merge relationship because. That's the one right there. I just can't walk away from. That's 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 the relationship right there. I gotta stand the deal. That's why I have to practice the most forgiveness. That's why I have to practice the most patience. That's why I have to practice the most gentleness. That's why I have to practice the most kindness. That's why I have to practice the most humility. That's why I have to practice the most forgiveness on a level that at the time, it doesn't seem like I'm able to. However, he still grants me enough grace and mercy to do it, to perform.
So converting over to being a true man of God and allowing him to teach me through the Holy Spirit, through the through the through the text. And the pastor through the whole church relate the whole thing, the whole body, like it all just goes in together. Even with my son, man, you know, uh, having to uh, like 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 Viv, she uh, she 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 uh, she she mentioned uh, my 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 biological son's older brother. Um, he sent me a text not too long ago saying that basically he bought the go crazy and he all right with it and don't come looking for me. Which meant to me, and I was talking to my wife about this, he's reaching out for help. Because anybody tell you don't come looking for me is really saying really come look. For me. Mm -hmm. Please come help me. So even with all of that, dealing with that, Try to cultivate my marriage, dealing with the work relationship. They talking about layoffs and this, that, and the third, and woo, 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 my job. And, you know, just, and, and, and sometimes I just want a place to be able to take my armor off, but I'm going to have to keep it on. I don't know. Am I making any sense? Somebody say something, please. <laughs> Yeah, B, you making sense. Come on, man. Come with it. I got you on mute for a reason because this output need to go. Go with this output, man. Um, we right here with you, man. Because the only people <laughs> that can talk is you and your wife. And I got it like that for a reason. So go ahead and do oh. what you're doing, man. Um, so 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 being able to, to uh it's like it's like I want to find a place where I could just take my arm off. And just relax for a minute, but for real, that ain't how that ain't how I set up. Mm -mm. I gotta keep my arm. <laughs> wow, I gotta keep my arm. On. You know what I'm saying? So the conversion, it, it uh, wow. You know, a lot of times, just it's it, it's 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 an ongoing process. Mm -hmm. It's not that I. I, I get I convert and then that that's it. No, I convert in this level. Then I go to the next level and, and go through a process of converting. Then I gotta keep converting and keep converting until God say it's over with. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I hope I answered your question. Your turn, Vivian. Y'all know y'all killing it. I ain't got to say nothing. Do this. <laughs> you know. To piggyback off of that, when he when he was talking about him keeping on his armor, if he don't keep on keep his armor on, the rest of the house gonna fall short. Cause he the head. So in Ephesians, it talks about him being the head and me as the wife being submissive. Okay, that's cool. But also respecting him. Now, if you don't have your armor on, I can't respect you. Because it also tells me I can't follow a fool. So you got to be wise and use wisdom. So the minute you slip up and take your armor off, where you put in the rest of the house? God said, we're we supposed to do things in what? In decency and in order. And so if we follow in decency and in order, it's okay to say, hey, wow, this is what I feel like doing. I want to take my armor off because it's times I want to take my armor off. Truth be told, it's been times that I say, forget all this, man. We can go ahead. Let's go to the court. We ain't got to do this no more. For what? But I got to get out of self. It's easy to walk away. But when you fight the good fight, God is well pleased. The only one mad is the devil. What the old folks say, ain't nobody mad but the devil. Ain't nobody mad but the devil. That's right. That's right. So why please him? Let's please God. Let's do what's right. Stay together as a family. Make that thing work. Fight the good fight. Let's keep it moving. And I was talking to Elder V about that second part. We don't want to talk about the second part. 
it's always been for me. I'm a t- I'm a I'm a talk for me. My husband always say, keep it on yourself. That's what I'm gonna do. So for me, I always heard you're supposed to be submissive. The wife's supposed to submit to her husband, period, point blank. And I'm like, wait a minute now. So it's not, you mean to tell me it's not nothing in this book that say what he's supposed to do? That's why it's important to know the word for yourself because this clear as day right up under that same scripture. I think it's chapter five in Ephesians. It talks about the, the wife being submissive to her husband, but the husband's supposed to love his wife. And if you ain't loving your wife, you wrong. In another Bible verse, it talks about the husband's not supposed to treat his wife harshly. But guess what I see in the body of Christ, though? Oh, okay. We ain't ready to talk about that. Because I, I, I see it. So if you're treating your wife harshly, you're wrong. And you need to stop. Yeah, we supposed to be submissive. But it's a twofold. You got to do your part. She got to do her part. So that's a partnership. Most businesses can't run with just one person. So everybody got to work together as a team for everything to come together. And see, we talking marriage things because a lot of people, they, they want to live single. I hear a lot of times now, I'm not living by man's law. I'm not getting married. That's, mm-hmm. not, that's man's law. Mm-hmm. I ain't following man's law. Is it man's law? Keep on. You do you. I like it on this side. I'm good. Because if you're going to allow a man to stay with you for 5, 10, 15, 20 years and not marry you, you need to take a look at why. There's something Uh-oh. underlying. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> and I'm telling you that there's something underneath for that. You know, way in the world, somebody just want to bust the body, bubble all of it. Can't, they, they, my <laughs> grandmother used to say, you're not supposed to be getting the milk for free. And, babe, so let, me go, let, me go out on, let me go out on a limb real quick and chime in and say, any man that is willing to shack up with another one woman for 10 or 15 or 20 years need to, need to, need to take another look. Let me, let me go and say that because that goes both ways. Yep. That goes both ways. But I'm sorry. I had to say it. Go ahead, babe. No, it's true. Because they got to be willing to deal with what's the underlying reason. Somebody keep telling you, oh, let's wait till we save up enough money. Why y'all can't save them coins together? Oh, let's wait till this happened. Let's wait till that happened. What you waiting for? Tomorrow is not promised to nobody. It says we supposed to let tomorrow worry about itself. We got to think about today. So when Brian came in my life and he told me out his own mouth, we not going to be dating for no years. So you could, I'm not doing that. If that's what you want to do, we not doing this. We getting married. I'm telling you now. I said, well, <laughs> I guess he told me. Because <laughs> I'm not having it. I will not continue <laughs> to live in sin of the nobody's group. Not even my own. It's like, no, I'm joking. <laughs> nah, but, um, yeah, that's real talk, man, for real. And to be honest with you, let me let me let me say this because I was studying marriage when we had got married, and I I was actually taking a look at what Paul was telling the Corinthians, right? And I think it's uh Corinthians, First Corinthians, chapter seven where Paul talks about um, if you have to fornicate, if you feel like you just have to fornicate, then go ahead and get murdered. But if you don't, or if you don't have that urge or whatever the case may be, then it's good for you to stay single and stay selling, right? And I was taking a look and I was taking a look at that. Uh, and I was like, that's some true stuff because the the you you have to then start to manage your spouse whereas though it doesn't interfere with 
your your worship or your work for God. You know what I'm saying? Because that can be a um I don't want to say a hindrance, that could be a distraction, so to speak. Because sometimes you'll, you know, you you uh I know for me, my zeal will be like, you know what I'm saying? I might want to go take care of the church, do something at the church. But then my wife say, uh, oh, but we ain't spend no time together, whatever, whatever. I got to make a decision. And sometimes, the, it's, and, and I understand, and I've seen that, because that's where the enemy like to play at. Right, right in that spot, right there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, because I remember enemy, enemy tried to tell me one day, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, well, you know, God, you know what I'm saying? Well, uh, you know, Viv ain't got to have a hell to put you in, so you might as well go ahead and uh, do what you got to do with the church. Or woo, woo, woo. You know what I mean? And that day, it was an incident where I did choose, and that day, I can, I can honestly say I chose wrong by going to the church instead of tending to my wife. And I can say that honestly today, you know what I'm saying, that I made that mistake. But it's through these lessons that I learn how to uh, uh, cultivate my marriage and do the right thing according to my wife versus um, or find that balance rather where it's though I can I can I can I can nurture my wife and take care of the body of the church at the same time. You know what I'm saying? It just takes some wisdom to do so. Um, you know, some you had had a had a Holy Spirit guide me. You know what I'm saying? Because truth be told, Satan he'll try to use the stuff in this book to confuse you. And I think that's uh Valeri, I think that's what I was talking about with uh when I asked you to take the note of legalism. Go 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 ahead, dive on in because you already on there. Go ahead. <laughs> the legalism, the legalism, because I remember uh in, in my pastor had to had to help me with this one because I will um you know you when you when you when you start to move in Christ and move in the way of Christ and your mind start getting renewed, you start to see things that you don't understand because you're looking in the book like, hold up, nah, we're supposed to be doing this this way. We're supposed to be doing that that way. And I'd be like, hold up. So you mean to tell me um, certain uh, titles can behave certain ways and, and, and it's all right and this, that, and the third? Mm -hmm. But I had, to take, I, had, I had to take a look at the grace and mercy part. You see what I'm saying? Because we under grace and mercy, and you gotta allow the uh the body to move and do because because I was reading somewhere it was talking about, I think it was in Colossians, where it was talking about uh we need we need the people that 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 uh that's not um doing what they're supposed to do, so to speak. We need those people too in the body. Because that's how we all going to grow up as a body. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to go on record and say that um, I remember I had an issue with the term or the title deaconess. I had an issue with that. Because I'm reading, you know what I mean? I'm just, you know, I'm reading this and the third and I'm like, hold on, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Then and then and then I said I'm talking about how Satan moved. Then he'll take me over to Corinthians. You know what I mean? I go from Timothy to Corinthians, and Corinthians to Paul to talk about uh, women supposed to be silent in the church. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, that had some validity to it, but at the same time, but guess what happened the other day? It had to, it was like like probably three days ago. I bust the book open. Romans 16 talked about. Uh, I'm gonna say uh Fieldy, Field, Field, whatever her name is, was as or acting as a deacon in the church. Yeah, right? Phoebe. That's how you pronounce it. Yeah, Phoebe. That there you go. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Okay. 
that's what's up. Because if I can see it in the book, then I can I can I can manage in my spirit. Because at the end of the day, I just want to be right at what I'm doing and what what I'm a part of and who I'm following, who I'm allowing to teach me and what have you. You know what I'm saying? So if I ever discourage anybody from believing that Deaconess was not a legal office in the body, I apologize. Point blank period. I apologize if if I discourage anybody from 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 uh from that. And I just want to hey, I just want to ask you know we just encourage each other, and we all you know like pastors say you know if we got questions let's just take another look. That's all it takes. Let's just take another look. You know what I'm saying? So um. Uh, all right, it's y'all turn. I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen. Vivi, you got something to talk about that baby? Because see, now your husband he went from that to 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 legalism. He dealt with peer pressure. He dealt with lifestyle. All the stuff that we talked about on the on the on the thing, y'all done covered it already. I ain't have to put nothing out there. So if you want to if you want to tap into that, you go right ahead because I'm with it. And then me and Brian will chime in as we need to chime in because y'all talking some real good stuff. I, I promise you a lot because there's a lot of stuff that's breaking breaking open just yeah. because y'all saying stuff the way y'all saying it. Because yeah. so many times you deal with stuff like this. And again, for those who watching, we ain't talking to the world. We talking to the body of Christ. Come on. In the church, in the I'm sorry, okay. in the building, because we the church. Okay, there you go. Go ahead. You got something yeah. to piggyback on what your husband said? Yeah. Go right ahead. I wanna I wanna tap into that the pre, the peer pressure part. So and 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 just like Elder V just said, this is within the body of Christ. So you going to church, you trying to do the right thing, right? This early on, like my husband was saying, it's two parts because you transition. You do go through a conversion because you have yourself that comes in and you shout and you hallelujah. God, I love you. And nothing matters but the Lord. And then reality sets in and days and months and years go past. And here it is. You're still saved, but you become stagnant. You sitting in this place, but you haven't removed those things that were. You're still stuck in that same place with them same people, but you just confess that you are now saved. You have accepted salvation in your life. But here you go. Your girlfriend call you up and she say, we about to go to the go-go. I want you to go. You want to go? Now, a lot of people, they still feel like you can still go out and party, get drunk, drink, do whatever you want to do, come back. They still can go to church. They smoke the weed. They do all these different things. But you find yourself on the sideline looking crazy saying, this ain't me. I don't fit. You got to stop trying to fit into this puzzle. That's their puzzle. Let their puzzle be their puzzle. At some point, you have to make a decision to say, you know what? For God, I live. For God, I die. That's it. You can't keep flip-flopping because that's what we do. We flip-flop. I, I I remember times we, we would be in the club all night, come back Sunday morning, we in church. Sitting there. Under all this good word, just missing it. It's just passing us by. Just letting all of it pass us by. And then one day the green light come on. Unfortunately for me, a lot had to happen. And I had to hit my head hard before the green light really came on to say, look, all them times you can't sleep at night and the Holy Ghost is bringing to you all these different visions, all these people that you don't even know. And he telling you to pray for them and you on your face at two, three o'clock in the morning. Here it is. You calling this man to say, hey, I can't sleep. He like, did you open the book? Did you read your word? Those reminders. You got to stay in the book. 
If you don't understand the change, the translation, I tell everybody that all the time. If you don't understand the translation, find, find somebody else that does. Find somebody that can help you. Absolutely. Get a better understanding of the word. Absolutely. And that's the problem. We got to understand it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. You can't rely on nobody else. That has to be something that's inside of you. Everybody ain't going to heaven, unfortunately. Mm. You Say gotta that. that. Say that. For yourself. Say if that. I can't make it for you. None of the V's or the B's on here can't make that decision for you. You got to ultimately make that decision for yourself. Because again, I'm tired of people saying we holier than now. We this, we this, we this. What's wrong with this side? Ain't nothing wrong with this side. I'm tired of it. it. Nothing in the Bible tells you to do anything wrong. So what's the problem? I don't get it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What you just say? What Did you nothing just say? Nothing in the Bible uh, tells you to do anything wrong. Oh, for nothing in the Bible tells you to do anything wrong. Nothing. Oh. Everything right, holy, oh. acceptable in God's sight. It is pleasing. He gives us the instructions of life in there. And people, they they backbiting us. They talk about the church, this, that, and the third. But what are you doing? Where's your fruit? Where, what, what have you labored? What have you done? I don't see nothing positive. But you keep saying all these different negative things about the body of Christ. I'm but you kidding. know that's supposed to happen. That's supposed to happen. You know oh, what I mean? Real? That's that's what they did. That that's what they talked about. That's 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 what um mm. what they did with Christ. That's what they did with the apostles. You know what I'm mm. saying? That's what they did with the believers. You know what I mean? Back then when they when these writings uh were uh were written and I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that's where we are now, where uh, we at the end of the book. It just is what it is. So even with that right there, it, it you know whoever's listening, whoever has not, uh, you know what I'm saying, uh, accepted, you know Christ Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You know what I'm saying. I would, I would, uh, I would encourage you to invite him into your life and um because it's going to get to a point it's getting to a point now where as though uh the church will start to be persecuted yes uh, you know um and uh because anytime you got <laughs> i seen this last night on the news where i was at work i seen uh trump holding the bible just taking pictures with the drink <laughs> Read your Bible, man. I'm trying to tell you it's in there. I don't but even, even hey. going back to just like with as far as like uh, uh -huh. marriage is concerned, being open with one another, being honest with one another, talking about the things that you don't want to talk about, no matter how it make you feel. You got to do it. Get you some books. We have all, we got couple stuff we going to break open. Um, matter of fact, babe, what was that book? We was we used to go down to the park in the beginning to read that. Purpose um, Driven Life. Yeah, Rick Warren. Oh, yeah, Rick Warren. Purpose yeah. Driven Life. We, mm -hmm. we used to go and take our lawn chairs. Here, have the little hibachi grill. We go down to the park and open that book up and read it with one another. Something as simple as that. Y'all, we, we got to take advantage of those moments. Like, we get so busy in the hustle and bustle of everyday life, we lose our friendship, our partnership, and our intimacy in marriage. And it's disappointing. Since I've been, and I'm keeping it on the body of Christ, since I've been in the church, I've seen eight people, eight couples get a divorce, eight. That I can remember. It's more than that. But to me, that's a problem. We got to make know. marriage first. We got to get to the point where we say marriage does matter. It's your and, first ministry. It takes work. 
and what you were saying earlier about <clears throat> um, what what Mr. Matthews was saying and and saying earlier about the representation of the two. Yeah. Um, and then what Mrs. Matthews just said about there's nothing in the Bible that's wrong. Mm -hmm. There's nothing in the Bible that's going that's that's making us do anything wrong. So. So with that being said, because so y'all got y'all took me all the way over to Jamaica and back. I'm trying to hold myself. I'm serious. You don't even understand what's going on through my brain right now. <clears throat> so in order to in order to operate as 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 husband and wife, Mr. Matthew said that 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 we have to read the book. Mrs. Matthews said there ain't nothing in the book that's do that they said the same thing, they just said it two different ways. She just said it ain't nothing in the Bible that's gonna tell us to do anything wrong. Nothing. Mm -hmm. They said the same thing, they just said it two different ways. So now, now with, with that being said, Mr. Coley, I need you to take you off of can you take it off of the thing? The, the mute so you I can hear you. Yeah, I'll take it off. Okay, so so with that being said, uh Brian, can you talk about that in itself? Because pretty much what, what, what Brian and, and Vivian talked about has been our walk probably the last how long we've been married all together, almost 20 oh. years, 21 years. All together. All yeah. together. All together within the from ninety nine to twenty twenty. So yeah. Yeah, over twenty years span. So so with that being said, um talk about our experience as far as what what Brian and Vivian just shared with them because people need to understand Brian and Vivian may have not been married as long as we have. Mm -hmm. And then and then but their experience our experiences and their experiences have been different, but they've been one in the same. And they've been one in the same because we're all part of the same body, the same body, which is the body of Christ. Our our experiences, we we've gone through and when I tell you, we we try to stay in this book on a regular basis. We try to stay in this book on a regular basis. I, <laughs> but I need you to elaborate just a little bit, honey, about about that and that experience, because people need to understand need to understand the young and the old. It don't make no difference. We all part of the same body, and we have something to give each other. Okay, I'll, I'll give it a shot here. Um... Because they covered a lot of ground. They yeah. A lot of ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> to say the very. Because uh, even to the point where we were, we would be in the church so much that uh, we were seldom home. Uh, sometimes we wouldn't run into each other. Uh, she would be gone and then she would come home and then I'd be gone. Um, to be uh, over uh, assistant bishop, uh, I'd be at the church or doing funerals and weddings and bar mitzvahs and whatever was going on. And then we would come home and go to work. Um, we might see each other for a little bit or well, a few minutes and then it starts all over again. Uh, and all the while we're trying to keep our relationship with Christ, um, do what's right, uh, read our Bible. Um, and, and in the first, uh, the first stint, I think it, it, it really pulled us away because um, we were doing a lot for the church and not for the reasons that we should have been. Um, I, I myself, I, I realize now Ooh, Jesus. that I had put a little, maybe a little too much 
into uh, what I was doing, trying to um, do what I thought was right. Um, and I think I missed a few things, especially as far as uh, marriage is concerned. I thought I was doing right. So I'm in the church. I'm working hard. I'm, I'm there when it opens. I'm there when it closes. Um, I, I'm, try, I'm trying to work for the same leadership that she is. So why is it so much distance between us? And I think we uh, were overworked. And instead of working the marriage towards us, we um, we were married and we were doing church all the time. So um, the, the, the time that you guys took to go and read uh, in the park, uh, we had a, a few times like that, but not many because we were always going back and forth to the church. And we were serving, we were serving others more than we were serving each other. Uh, I, I want to throw this out there that the serving, serving is not the woman bringing you a tray of grapes all the time and you just sitting there and sucking up the, the, the it, that's, that's, that's not 50 50. Serving, you give, she gives, you take, and she takes. It, it is a marriage. Um, you do things for her. She does things for you. It all works the good works, works together for the good to them that love, you know, that, that the Bible thing. Um, and I, I want to throw something else out there. Uh, that has to do with what we were doing at work today. And the subject came up of uh, reading. And, Back in the day, you you might have y'all might not be my age, but back in the day, the bookmobile used to come through, and it says reading is fundamental. And you apply that to your Bible, and you find out that reading is fundamental. You need to read your Bible. That way, you will not get fooled by every whim and uh, doctrine and. Uh, People holding up Bibles in front of churches during for publicity stunts, and you'll see all through all that. I, I'm 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 gonna leave that one alone because you guys took it. You, you guys took off on that thing. Uh, I'm still trying to catch up with y'all. <laughs> I'm still trying to catch up. Yeah. Um. Uh. Uh. uh as far as we're concerned, we've had many experiences. Uh, we've, we've given up much time uh, and not as much. I, I think that took away from the time that we had to do to work on our marriage. Because um, we would go at, at a moment's notice. And I was working... I, I was working on some uh, ungodly hours. Um, <laughs> and for instance, um, I would work from 6, 6 p.m. to 5 a.m. I'm driving uh, to Reston. Uh, I would leave from Reston, come home, be back at the church at 7, leave the church uh, around 12 o'clock service, Get back up, be back to work that Sunday night at six, and then I wouldn't see. Her. Hopefully, uh, you know, if the camera was facing where she was sitting, hopefully I would see my wife on the camera at least. But otherwise, it was, uh, hey, I, I'm I'm about to go home. I'm about to go get some sleep before I go to work. I'll see you later. That was a lot. We, we spent a lot of time doing that and not a lot of time to seeing each other. And that, 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 that does things in your, in your, in your mind. It does things. 
because you, you don't you don't get familiar with your wife. You don't you don't learn your marriage um, working being at the church all the time. Sometimes uh, you can give a little more than uh, um, trying to fix things, trying to put your finger in in the holes what you think you should be doing and instead of letting God fix what's that, what, what's there, uh, any issue, uh, you may be over, how can I say, uh, uh, over serving? Is that a, you know, um, you're, you're an eye and you're trying to do the work of the hand. You see what I'm saying? Uh, and, and also trying to be the eye also. So you're, you're instead of letting the hand do its work, <laughs> you're in the way of the hand and, and you're taking away from the eye's duties. You, you're yeah. not doing the eye's duty now. Yeah. So yeah. 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 I think we put, uh, we may have put a yeah. little more... Um, <laughs> In the yeah. in the first in the first uh, marriage, and we should have, um, yeah. and we we really worked at it. We we tried to do the best we can. We gave one hundred and ten percent, and but we didn't keep home uh, like we should have, mm -hmm. and and it fell apart. So where y'all had thought about going to the court. We went to the court. We went to the court. That's right. We actually went there 11 years, eight months, 29 days, 12 hours and 30 minutes. We were at the oh. court. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, I know exactly when that day was. I have another I have another day, but I won't mention that, too. I, I remember uh, there, there's a couple of days in our marriage. That I remember, and one one that she doesn't, but I remember, and I use that just in case I get in trouble. Which is what? If, if June on, you remember the night of June 9th, 19 <sighs> something? Yeah, it's not a birthday, it's not an anniversary. Uh, um, can I say, uh, can I use the word fornication on here? Woo! Okay, thank you, because I was getting ready to go there, because Vivian had, okay. He's they, I know they're a little young. They know, they're a little young. They might not know about that. Because, um. Okay, okay, okay. Not every Christian, um. um okay. You know, um. Some people knew each other before they got married. Uh, some, not to say that y'all did. There's just, just some, some people knew that. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that alone. Okay. So therefore, honey, this how this this how you know we've been married a long time. Because I remember, I remember, I remember, uh, the conversation. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, my sister and I, and she wanted to make a point of that, and, and I'm gonna and I'm gonna say something about that, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and let <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and let Mr. Matthews and Mrs. Matthews come on wrap this thing up because this thing getting real good right here. Um, it is no secret from it's no secret amongst those that we have dealt with. It is no secret. Um, in my family, no, no, it's no secret that my husband and I were sleeping together before we got married and we were in church. It was no secret. No secret at all. No. We was, we was bumping and grinding. We was knocking boots. However, we was doing all that in church. All that. We was in church. I was a deaconess. Deaconess. Was I was a deaconess, right? Was I a deaconess? Right. I was a deaconess. deaconess. I was deaconess yeah, I was. in church. Brown was a deacon, and not yet. He, no, 
You went to Dickie yet. yet? Okay, well, he was on his way. And he was serving in the media ministry, and I was serving in whatever capacity I was serving in. And he, okay, when, when he called, I went, and when I called, he came. All the above, all that in the church, all this part of the same church. And um, I got I got convicted. I can't speak to I can't speak for my husband. I cannot. I got convicted because I was I wanted to do right by God. And I'm and I'm and I'm going through my brain. I'm like, God, this you said this is wrong. As much as I want to do it, as much as I like it, it's wrong. And I can't keep doing this to you because I don't want you to kill me. Period. It, it ain't no, it ain't no, it, there's no sugar coat around that. Okay, God, I don't want you to kill me because I like having sex outside of marriage. And and I'm telling you, it was it was a struggle. It was a struggle in the beginning. And then we end up getting married and we start serving and we start doing and, you know, we start serving, start doing what we was doing. Things, responsibilities were getting um, heavier in the church. We were doing different things, doing more things, all the above. And it, it go right back to what um, um, my point would be is that. Um, we was doing so much in the church that the very thing that we was doing prior to getting married, we weren't doing as much after we got married because we was doing everything in the church. We ain't had time. And if we did have time, we was too tired. And if we was too tired, it was like, okay, forget it. And it's like, it, it ain't no use because ain't nobody, ain't nobody getting what they need to get. It's just something to just be doing something. So with with what Mr. Matthew said in the beginning about being a hopeless romantic and all that, Brian Coley is not a hopeless romantic. Brian like looking at TV, and as long as he look at TV, we can do this, do that, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm okay with that. But what I'm saying is, is that we were so consumed in doing the things, doing the things of the church, that we did not know how to minister to each other in our bedroom. We didn't, we, we had every excuse in the world. And then if, if I wanted to, he didn't want to, if he wanted to, I didn't want to. And then we would be mad and go through all these changes. And it's like, okay, is what is this? It, it can't be worth all this. I'm sorry. So it go back to the intimacy of, of the body of Christ and, and our husband who is, is Christ. How intimate are you with him? How intimate do you do you because the representation is there? How intimate are you with him? And and we everybody on here grown. Well, you ain't got to go to the to the to the flesh to what I'm talking about. Because I know some people just get stupid with it. You get we're talking about the intimacy. You you're being able to pour out and and talk to God about any and everything. Because I promise you, I talk to God about everything. Everything, everything, and I am not exaggerating everything. I pray about everything. So how is it that I'm part of the body of Christ, but I can't talk to the one that created me about my issues? How is that? How is that? How is it that I can't, how is it that I can't, can't say to God, okay, Jesus, Brian, so-and-so and doing this and that. You created me. You know what my issues are. You know what I'm doing. And I promise you, 98% of the time I go to God and was talking to God about Brian, God was showing what was wrong with me. It wasn't, I had to adjust. I had to adjust. Just like he had to adjust. So when you're talking about the intimacy and 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 being able to 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 uh, be intimate with your partner, that's that's major stuff, man. Because the Bible says that the marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. It's in the Bible. It's it's in there. I promise you. If you type if you type it up, it's in there. 
the marriage is honorable mm -hmm. and the bed is undefiled. So what that means, correct me if I'm wrong. And I think, I think your pastor's still on here because he's shady, but he, I think he's still on here. If, if I'm understanding that right, that means you need to know your, your spouse in order to know what pleases them. And you need to stay in the confines of your of the word of God. That don't that don't mean that you bring a, a, a demon in your bedroom and, and that no, because the Bible says that you have to be born again. So all that stuff that you was doing when you was in the street and you liked it. If it ain't in the word, you no, Slim, you can't be bringing it in your bedroom. That ain't how that work. That's not how that work. I'm sorry. As much as you like it, as much as you got your walks off, all of the above, if it is not in the confines of the 66 books in which we live by, I'm talking to the body of Christ. If it is not in the confines of the 66 books that we live by, you shouldn't be bringing that in your bedroom, man. Amen. You should be, you should be, you shouldn't be bringing porn in your bedroom. Come on. Amen. Okay. Because I used to watch porn. I used to get high and watch porn. Mm -hmm. Okay. After, after accepting Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I used to, all that. Yeah. You can't bring that in your bedroom. That's right. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't care how, how much it, in, it entices you. You got to understand the dynamic of the spirit that pornography is attached to. So you want that in your bedroom? Ain't nothing holy about pornography. Nothing. Nothing. That is just straight exploitation. Yes. You want that in your bedroom? Oh, well, you know, my husband like it. Okay, I understand. I, I get it. But you in the body of Christ. Somebody, some need to change. Some need to change. You, you have to start somewhere. You have to start somewhere. So, Vivian, talk about that, baby, because that, that's one of the subjects you had brought up when we talked. So, for me, intimacy is very important in the marriage. Um, and we, too, we, we struggled with that as well in the beginning because oh, it was real cute for us to say what well, we wasn't going to do. But when it came time for us to court and go on dates and be in each other's presence one-on-one -on -one and, you know, him being a promiscuous person beforehand, same thing with me. I was a promiscuous person. You got to die that flesh down. And so, and, and you meeting up with one another and he looking at you, you looking at him, next thing you know, it's a wrap. Here y'all go, y'all intertwining, y'all having sex outside of marriage. And you try to combat it. We prayed, we talked about it, um, fell by the wayside a few times. Then we went through a period where, like you said, the conviction came and we were able to wait. And then we went forward. However, because of the things that we had did in our past, we already knew what the filler was. But if we wouldn't have touched that hot stove in the first place, we would have known better. So we dipped and dabbed into it. And so now we're trying to please the flesh. So that tells you the flesh is weak. So we couldn't fight those feelings and get past those things. We didn't have enough willpower. And so you have to ask God, please give us another way. So that's when you start to come up with different ways to be intimate. Intimacy doesn't only have to be sexual. You can be intellectual and be intimate with one another. There's other things. Find out what each other likes, doesn't like. Find out what his or her habits are. Get into those types of things because oftentimes we go into the marriage thinking we know somebody. You don't know jack about them. Let 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 them three months go go by and y'all been living under the same roof with one another 
and they come by walking too hard on the floor. You get mad, you get upset because this person done dropped some crumbs or he leaving the toilet seat oak up and all this other stuff. Y'all getting to learn each other habits and you see that it's a whole lot of stuff you don't like and then you sitting back like, hey, that's who I married. But at the same time, I love this person. I got to accept him for who he is. He have to accept me for who I am. That's a covenant that we took. We made this promise to each other. And I want to admonish the couples that are on here. Let me say this. Married couples that are on here. Be intimate. Tonight, we, we rooting for you. Get back into it. If you haven't been doing that, you need to take care of business today. Start over. Start fresh. Start to know one another. Love on one another. It's different things you guys can do to become intimate. Like, like I said, intellectual. Start the conversation. Start talking to one another. With Brian and I, because of things that I had experienced going back to earlier, um, one of the difficulties was me not being as affectionate. When we were young, my mother wasn't no hugger. Well, you ain't hugging nobody. You good? Okay. You ain't hurt? Okay. All right. Love y'all. That's it. So when Brian come along, he want to hug, he want to touch, he want to feel. I'm like, what are you doing? But I had to learn to embrace hey, that. Because my hard exterior could very well push my husband away. And then next thing you know, he getting it from somewhere else. Why? When I got what the other person have. The grass is not green on the other side. And that's where we get it construed. That's, that's just, Okay. It talks about how you're supposed to love your own husband. And those words are in the Bible for a reason. It says your own, it says the wife is supposed to love her own husband, which tells us that somebody was doing something they ain't had no business doing. You're supposed to love on your own husband. That means stay in your lane. Be respectful of somebody else's man or woman. That's theirs. Like Elder V said, that's your man. That's your husband. And I don't want to walk in them shoes that you had to walk in anyway. People don't know that. They just look at the exterior of a person. You out here less than and being a little demon walking around a horn dog and you see somebody because they look nice. That's somebody else's husband. That's somebody else's wife. And you're less than after them, but you don't know what it took for that person to get to where they at now. And you think you about to come in and intervene in something and take that away from somebody else without a fight? No. And I'm talking about in the church. In the church, in the body of Christ, it's in there. Leaders and all. We got to get rid of the filthiness. We got to get rid of the filthiness. We got to ask God to remove it, cleanse us. See your brothers and sisters with the right eyes. Those eyes you're looking at them, that's not right. Go get your own husband. Go get your own wife. Get your own. That's it. And you know what? It, to piggyback on that, right? I remember, I, I, I think I read it the other day. I want to say it probably was in Corinthians where uh, Paul was talking about when people practice that promiscuous behavior in the church, we're supposed to put them out. Now, if we're going to be real, that's bad. That's <laughs> we're supposed to put them out. But why do we let them stay? Mm -hmm. So we ain't going to answer that. We're going to move forward. So, but, um, you know, uh, you, said a, you said a lot, uh, woman. And, um, uh, I remember we had actually fasted for 30 days in the very first beginning. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that, I mean, we still, you know, did we did, you know, after that. But we actually fasted for 30 days when we first got together. Cause, and I think that was more so, and I'm not trying to boast or nothing like that. I'm just saying that to say that that was the desire that's how much we wanted to do the right thing this go around. Yeah. Yeah, sir. You know what I'm saying? 
because um, you know we both got passed. I mean, you know, we I mean I, I come up I raised in District Heights, man, home ball central. You know what I mean? We you know that's what we did growing up. So I remember passing a preaching about uh when Moses took the Israelites out of Egypt and they brought Egypt with them. <laughs> so a lot of times you call yourself getting married, you bring you bring Egypt with you. You know what I mean? So you and that's where a lot of conversion has to take place, you know what I'm saying? In the thinking. Now you might you ain't behaving like that no more, but your thinking got to change. That's why you got to renew your mind in Christ. You know what I'm saying? And 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 then the process starts. You know? And a lot of times it gets better if you stick and stay. You know what I mean? If because I know right now, um, yeah, we we was almost at the crowd, but then um, you know what I had to do though? I had to give her to God. Because I can't fix her. And I've come to that realization. But what I find that when I do give her to God, honestly, pray and give her to God, I promise you, it'll be like two or three weeks later. I don't want to put a time frame on it. It happens when it happens. It happens when it happens, if whoever practices it. But for me, in my experience, when I give, when I honestly gave my wife to God, Two or three weeks later, she'll come back and say exactly what I didn't pray about. Every time. And it's been a good handful of times I've done it. So I want to encourage give your spouses to God. Because the results, see, because when you give your spouse to God, from what I've learned, he'll take care of it because we can't fix nobody. We can't fix nobody. That's just it. We because if that was the case, we'd fix ourselves, right? If that was the case, you wouldn't need to say. Real simple stuff. You know what I'm saying? So man, I just man, look. Hey woman. See, that's how I talk to her. I say, yes, I say hey woman. <laughs> hey woman. <what's laughs> <you? laughs> You know what I mean? Gotta tell her, come from up out of there. Come in here. <laughs> but, not, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so that's good. really important though, the intimacy. And then see, and that's the thing. When you got two different ideals coming together, you got an overly affectionate person with a less affectionate person. What 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 how do you you know what I mean? How do you how do you make that match? You better not come in there playing Kirk Franklin. I tell you that. Yeah, I you don't bring on, him in here. Put on some Frankie Beverly or Marvin Gaye. That's the other thing. People think you can't listen to none of that. Hey, marriage yeah. bed undefiled. She said it. You heard it. You better put the music, that music on and stop playing. Somebody like Luther also. Uh, there you go. Talk about it, Brother B. That's right. That's right. <laughs> That's it right there, though, because guess what? That's where the patience comes in at. Because at that particular point where I want a certain thing or a certain intimate moment and my spouse might not be ready, what do I do? Let's be real. Say it. I got to set and I got to tear it. They did how the old churches say they tarry away for the Holy Ghost. That's how you say you got to sit and wait. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to sit and wait. And guess what? And and that's where I can sit and, and kind of get myself together. You know what I mean? Get and work and work on my work on me. Because at the end of the day, I still gotta be patient. You know what? Let me can I read something real quick? Sure, absolutely, sugar. Go right ahead. Okay, so Colossians 3, right? Oh, for real? That's the chapter you're going to work on? That, that's where I'm going to work out of. <sighs> you know I mean? Colossians 3, and we at, at verse 12, it says, since in this New Living Translation, since God chose you to be the holy people he loved, you must clothe yourselves with tenderhearted mercy. 
kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And it says that make because of that, you got to make allowance for wow. each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. So what that tells me is, I know you're going to mess up, so I got to allow you to mess up. And then I got to make room for that. Watch yourself. So why do I get mad when you do something wrong to me? Ooh. But I'm supposed to make room for that. I'm supposed to expect it. Man, look. And then it says, remember the Lord forgave you. So you must forgive up. All above, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and, all, and always be thankful. You know what I mean? So we're not only supposed to practice that in our, in our, in our marriage relationship, we're supposed to practice that in the body of Christ as well. So, so if I if I can concentrate on that, nothing nobody do should really bother me. That's what the scripture is telling me. It's telling me if I renew my mind in Christ and if I'm supposed to be saved and I'm supposed to be this and that, why am I still falling short in these areas? I'm falling short because I'm not doing the proper work that the scriptures are telling me to do. Real simple. If I'm not forgiving, or if I'm if I'm if, if anything like that's because I'm not doing something. So my bad, I just I had to say that. Y'all, 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 y'all can have the floor. <laughs> I know you ain't talking about nobody bad, man. You um, went all the way. Go ahead, man, because you you the one. Okay, Vivi, you got something to say after what your husband just said? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I mean, I mean, what? Oh, my bad. Oh, my, I mean, no, my, no, no. My and main you, thing is just we just got to get back to basics and 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 get back to what attracted you to your spouse what drew you to your spouse get back to the love get back to the butterflies and it's a way to keep it there we just gotta love on each other we let the kids come in we let the jobs come in we let the body of christ come in we let all these things come in and shake up our relationships and we lose we lose each other. We get into that routine that, that Deacon Brown was just talking about. We get into that. Like like you said, sir, it becomes routine. Mm -hmm. And we, we can't, we, we got to bind that. That's the, the enemy loves that. Mm -hmm. So we just need to, like I said, get back to basics. Learn how to love one another again. And 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 get back to intimacy. That's all I can do. I'm gonna encourage you mm -hmm. <laughs> again on today. <laughs> Make that your priority. Make your spouse your priority. Yep. Cause I believe marriage, marriage, marriage does work. Mm -hmm. It's still alive. You got you got a cup got got two couples right here. And y'all come out young and old. We ain't that young. But I'm just I'm saying. I'm just saying. I take it. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But, I'm know, just saying. I, I'm, I'm just excited for the seeds that God has planted in you all mm -hmm. because you are, ooh, you, you guys are setting the bar real high. And I thank God for you all. You're setting the bar real high. And I, I, I thank God that he placed the vision, the gift in you all. And I pray that God will bless you all and overflow. Because this is awesome. Don't that stop. That means a whole lot of it. Amen. Yeah, don't stop. <laughs> Keep going. Amen. Keep going. I love you all. I love you too. We love you too. 
Okay, uh, Mr. Matthews, tell him, tell him what, tell him what your, what your other contribution to the body of Christ as far as your production company, because we're gonna wrap it up, because you don't want that to go. Um. Oh, basically, you know, I, you know, I, I kind of dabble around with hip hop music. You know, I come up on hip hop music, so, and um. You know, growing up, you had so it was a positive, conscious rap where mm -hmm. you know they talked about a lot of stuff, and a lot of those guys were like five percenters and Muslims and stuff like that. But I never heard like people talking about rapping about Christ. So, you know, fast forward, um, I made a couple of I produced a couple of records, and um, I uh. I came across some guys who are believers who, who can rap. So we, we started putting it together. And then one of my homies, this, this kind of um, guy I grew up with from the same box, you know, we always used to kind of like just talk about, you know, God, you know, the different religions out here. Because when you like, 13, you still trying to find your way because you, you know, you try because you want to know the truth, but you like, why all these religions? You got Muslims and five percenters, and Catholics and Christians, and what have you. So, we used to wrestle with that a lot. So, um, so fast forward, you know, we we all believe in Christ, they can rap. I made some tracks, we put it together, and we got a few records on YouTube, you know. Talking about, you know, they telling their stories, or you know, just talking about different subject matters in regards to uh, believing in Christ. Okay, so tell them what's what's your production company name and how they can follow you, babe. So they oh can yeah, Godspeed, Godspeed Productions. You can follow us on um, Instagram. Um, you can go on the YouTube page. Um, we got a YouTube channel called Godspeed Productions, Productions with a Z um, instead of an S at the end. And um, yeah, check it out, man. You know, see, see this is some real good inspirational, you know, records, you know. Uh, and it's, uh, we just uh, really some guys that believe in Christ is trying to put a message out there for people, you know, try, you know, people who want to hit that like hip hop music. You know, you would listen to that and, you know, hopefully it could plant a seed, you know what I'm saying, for the glory of the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. basically. Because at the end of the day, we just try and get people to understand that, man. You know, it's cool to follow Christ. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And you don't have to, you know, we you can still be human, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. it's just, we got, we got work to do as believers, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? You don't have to... <clears throat> I, I, I don't want to say you don't have to renounce all the stuff because in a sense you do. However, you know, um, you know, it, it, the grass is greener over here, mm -hmm. but it is some work you're going to have to do. Yeah, that conviction goes again eventually. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. So that's basically what it is, you know. I probably post something. Um, we got a we got a record, we a newer record. We're gonna call it Statue of a Fool. Um, we're gonna upload probably in a couple of days. So okay. um, if you're my friend on Facebook, I'm a uh, I'll, I'll be posting it on my page and um, in the link. So uh, take a take a look at that. Uh, I'm pretty sure my wife probably posted. And um, you know, just check it out. Check it out. You know. Okay, so tell them your name on Facebook, baby. Spell spell oh, your Brian name. Brian Matthews. Okay. Brian Matthews. Okay. That's my name on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook page for the for the production company because mm -hmm. it's pretty small right now, and you know we just pretty much just doing this for people we know. You know what I'm saying? We haven't really gone on a grand scale with it yet. You know. So, Not yet. So. Right. Right. Amen. Miss Vivian, you got something else you want to say, baby, before we wrap it up? You I'm good? good. <laughs> you good? Brian Coley, you got something you want to say before we wrap it up? Oh, Lord, have mercy. Okay. 
<laughs> we, you know what? This has been Brian. I'm mute your your phone. Okay, you unmuted. This has been. This wow. has been. This has been really. I'm telling you, there is there is not an adjective that I have right now that could, could remotely describe um, how how amazing this has been. And I really believe that a lot of people have been blessed because of the transparency um, and knowing that that we as the body of Christ have a whole lot to offer. Mm-hmm. And we don't have to do things the way the world does it. Because we got our own, we got our own vibe. You know what I mean? So it's, it's this has been a major blessing. I, I really do appreciate um Mr. and Mrs. Matthews for taking the time out to share with us um, about all this. And I'm I'm just grateful. I'm just really grateful. Um if you all have any questions or is there anything that you would like to talk to um, Brian or or uh, Vivian about, please, by all means, please, by all means, you can inbox me or you can inbox uh, Brian Matthews or Vivian Matthews. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, and and I'm, I know they'll answer you and they, they got word for you. It ain't going to be no... None of that is they give you straight word, and and that's what's gonna help us be better in Christ, um, because of that. So, y'all look them up Vivian Matthews and Brian Matthews with a Y B R with Y A N Matthews. Yeah. Look them up, and 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 Brian's um ministry is God's God Speed Production with a Z on the end. So, y'all look them up and support them. And continue to pray for them as God continues to use them in a in a mighty mighty way. Amen. So, Amen. Um, thank you all so much again for for coming on. And I'm gonna ask Miss Vivian, y'all pray us out, okay? Yes. Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for this fellowship. God, we thank you for those that are on the airways. God, we ask that you would go into the homes, God. God, that you would mend relationships, Lord God, that you would bring back the intimacy, God. We thank you for covering the leaders in this ministry, God, Elder V and her husband, Brian, God. We ask that you would continue to bless them and keep them, God, covered in your blood, God. We thank you that as they continue to do your work and your will, that you would just continue to keep them covered, God. God, their family, we ask that you would shield them, God, in these days and times that we're living in, God. God, we ask that you would just continue to bless families across the world, God. God, let people know that they need to continue to just love on one another. Let us grow in love with one another. God, these things we ask in your name. We ask for peaceful sleep on tonight. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 No. Amen. Amen. We thank you all so very much. God bless you. We look forward to uh seeing you all next week as the Lord leads us. Um, we usually do set apart on Tuesdays, every Tuesday at 7 30. Um, <clears throat> um, the Lord is, is doing the back and forth as far as the marriage chronicles every actually every every other week. So as the Lord leads us. Um, we'll be on as he, as he gives us space to do so. So y'all continue to pray for us, continue to pray for the Matthews as they continue to be a blessing to the body of Christ. And we continue to pray for each other. Amen. God bless Amen. you. We love you all so very much. Good night. All right. Good don't night. Hang up. Y'all don't hang up. Don't hang up. <laughs>